It's true. A lot of people did try to stop women from playing football in Brazil and worldwide. However, they have always been brave, bold, and brazen. One of the first women's games on record was held in 1881 in Scotland. The Scottish team faced the British team in that game. We have the reproduction of a poster here at the Origins Room calling the public to a British Women's Championship in 1895. That same year, a man named Charles Miller, known as the father of Brazilian football, organized the first official matches in this country. As a matter of fact, these two images are right near each other inside this room. If you need, you can take a break to find them. Since the beginning of the 20th century in this country, some girls were already dabbling in football. At the time, Brazilian married women didn't have access to basic rights. They couldn't hold a bank account and couldn't go to work without their husband's permission. Unbelievable. Many girls started playing in mixed teams or even against boys. And then, exclusively female teams began to appear in clubs such as Vila Isabel, Vasco, Celeste, and São Cristóvão. For a long time, the first record we have of women playing was from 1921. It was a match between teams from the neighborhoods of Cantareira and Tremimbé in the north area of São Paulo. Nowadays, we know that this was not the first or the only female game going on at the time. In Rio Grande do Norte, a state in the northeast of Brazil, in 1920, the girls from ABC Football Club and Sports Club Natalense were on a magazine cover. Among the players, there was even a future first lady, Jandira Café. Distinguished members of the audience, do not miss women's football today. By the way, were you aware that, like football, circus as we know it today was also a British invention? The circus bleachers were split in two, just like two sets of crowd in a stadium. The arena was the field. The players wore jerseys from the best-known teams of the cities in which they performed. It may even seem like it was some kind of mockery, but it wasn't. Thanks to the circus, women had a chance to experiment with playing the sport, which would eventually change their minds about the idea that football was for men only. Women's football championships were performances that traveled with the circus throughout the entire country. There is an image of the Brothers Queirolo Circus Championship inside the Origins Room. You can press pause to look for it. Hint, it's near the center column. One of the players, Benedita França, was the wife of a famous clown named Piolin. In the picture, she is on the right, the last among those crouching down. Football was imported from Europe and a sport that was born rich. Club memberships had expensive fees, and for that reason, less privileged people were left out. Even so, people that who were excluded still wanted to play and formed their own teams. Smaller, lowland, amateur, suburban football. Many were the names, the stars, the games, and the trends that were born in the outskirts of the big cities. For the women, it was absolutely no different. In the 1930s, more than 15 women's football teams existed in the suburbs of Rio de Janeiro. The games of the Daughters of Eve, as they were called at the time, had sponsors, prizes, sweepstakes, and a visibility that grew exponentially. Tearing apart the phony fable that women's football matches would never be able to draw an audience or even retain the public's attention. The problem was that not everybody was happy with more women in sport. And so it was that on April 14, 1941, President Getúlio Vargas formalized Article 54 of Decree Law 3199. It was the dawn of the populist dictatorship of Estado Novo. Authoritarianism was on the rise. The rule strictly demanded women to refrain from playing sports that were incompatible with the conditions of their nature. It was like cold water poured on a streaming new football scene, a situation that really only started to revert back around 1983. But we'll get there. First, listen to the stories of incredible women who fought for the right to play football in Brazil and should be deemed heroines in our next episode. <laughs>